All right, so as promised, I have part two for John Frusciante's new pedal boards for Unlimited Love. Today, we're gonna to be going over the actual full Unlimited Love Tour pedal board. This is the big one. If you haven't seen my first video on the promotional board that he's used for the Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel performances, go give that one a watch after you're done watching this video. Now this pedal board is from the very first full show that the Red Hot Chili Peppers have performed for the Unlimited Love era, but because the world tour isn't starting for a few more months still, this board might be subject to change the next time we see it, but nevertheless, it's gonna be a really good look at the pedals that John probably is gonna be using for the whole tour to recreate all those classic sounds that we just love, all the quintessential Peppers sounds from John and his eras especially that we love. So let's dive in and take a look. Now, the image you're seeing on screen here is a screenshot from Iron Tom's Instagram story. They did a whole tour during the sound check on their story, and this is a screen grab of John's board. Don't pay any attention to the one in front. John's pedal board is the massive one behind the front one. Now, I'm going to break down the board from the very first row, right to left, then go up to the second tier, right to left again. So let's get right into the pedal board breakdown. Now the very first pedal on the board is one I'm actually pretty excited to see return to the Chili Peppers arsenal, and that's the Moog Mogerfoger Low Pass Filter. Now it, this also could be the ring modulator. The only cosmetic difference between the two with the knob layouts and everything being identical is the color of the switches. It's orange on the low pass filter and blue on the ring mod, but Veronica, to me, that definitely sounds like the low pass filter, very similar to the Danny California wobble effect. So I believe this is going to be a low pass filter on the pedal board. And one thing that I haven't actually seen talked about a lot online is that somewhere hidden on this board, I pretty much guarantee you, is gonna be one of those CP215 processors from Moog as well that John was using to help control the low pass filter and get that Danny California effect. I'm pretty sure that this is gonna be attached to one of those just like it was during the Stadium Arcadium era. So keep that in mind, there's probably at least one of those in the works on the board as well. We just can't see it from this shot. Next, we have the first mystery pedal on the board. And I honestly have no clue what that is. I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out what it is. The only thing that comes remotely close to me is a 1981 Inventions DRV. But as you can see, the knobs on this pedal on John's board are almost in the center of the board, not at the back. So it definitely can't be that, but that's the only one that I can really think of that has a switch on the left side and three knobs remotely kind of like that. If between now and the time this video uploads and we figure it out, I'll edit that in now. I did not. But if you guys don't see anything, then I still don't know. So please leave a comment down below as what you think this could be. I have absolutely no clue. The next two pedals appear to be identical and I believe they are MXR reverb pedals. I believe there are two of them. Now, of course, this could also be an MXR Univibe or a compressor, but I don't think it's either of those. And on John's mini pedal board, he had an MXR reverb. So if the pedal is that important to be on his mini board, I guarantee you it's gonna show up on his large pedal board. What I'm assuming is going on here with the reverbs is that kind of like during the Stadium Arcadium era when he had that big box Holy Grail reverb kind of almost in the center of the pedal board that was feeding the Jubilee. I'm assuming that something similar is going on here, especially where it's placed, and that these pedals are either probably feeding one amp each after the signal has been split, so one reverb for each amp, or two reverbs for one amp just set differently. That's what I'm willing to bet is going on here, but of course, we don't get the greatest look at it, so it might be something different, but I'm pretty confident that's what's going on with these two black pedals. All right, next we move on to that Ibanez WH-10 V3 modded by Wilson FX, same pedal that was on John's small pedal board. After that, we move on to an MXR Super Badass Variac Fuzz. I actually just picked one up earlier today. So, Guys, hit that subscribe button because you have a lot of content with John Frusciante style pedals. Again, this amp's gonna be making quite a few appearances because it's the same one John is using, funny enough, I had all along. So hit that subscribe button now. Do yourself that favor. After the MXR Super Badass Variac Fuzz, we move on to a Boss SD-1. Funny enough, we saw what we thought was one of these during that 2020 reunion, the very first show John played with the Chili Pepper since he rejoined, and it looks like that has clearly become a staple since then for his rig. After that, of course, it wouldn't be a John Frusciante pedal board without a Boss DS2 on it. 
Another new addition is the Boss XT2. These pedals actually look really interesting. They're not super common, but just another flavor, obviously, of distortion for the pedal board. After that, you have, of course, an MXR micro amp, again, another staple. Now, it's at this point we actually have to change images because the Red Hot Chili Peppers posted to their story some footage of John Frusciante soloing with the WH-10. What you couldn't see from the original screenshot that I've shown you guys that you can on this is what appears to be one last pedal on the front row. And to me, it looks like a Big Muff. But which version of Big Muff is it? That's what we honestly don't know. From this angle and the lighting in the video, it's extremely difficult to tell. I'm honestly not comfortable calling it like a USA Big Muff or a Ram's Head Big Muff, but to me, the enclosure, at least in this lighting, looks almost more silver than having a lot of graphics on it, like the USA Big Muff that John was using before. So this could be a Ram's Head Big Muff. I don't know. Don't rush out and buy one until we get a better look at the pedal board, but it looks like he's going to have a Big Muff to cover at least the old school John Frusciante fuzz sounds on it. All right, now we're going to the back row. There is an MXR Dynacomp and an MXR Phase 90. Now we're gonna switch to another image here. This one was sent to me by Marco Rodriguez and he got an awesome shot of the top row of John Frusciante's board. You can see here that the Phase 90 is just a standard Phase 90, it's not script. Then you have an MXR Flanger and then you have an Echoplex and then an MXR Carbon Copy Delay which those two pedals, especially those last two, were really hard to tell from the first screenshot from Iron Tom's story. So this is absolutely killer that we got this shot to confirm what those two pedals are on the back row. Then of course you can see, which honestly is a pretty big surprise to me, the Digitech PDS 1002 on his board. Still, after all these years, he's using this pedal. I used to have one and I'm now I'm regretting selling it. After the PDS 1002, you move on to a Boss DD500. I can't help but think this is taking place of the DL4, but with the release of the new DL4 version, you never know. Maybe that might make its way onto John Frusciante's board by the time the world tour starts. I think that's a pretty good possibility. And of course, we finish off the board with the classic Boss CE1. It just wouldn't be the John Frusciante sound without this pedal. Oh man, and there you guys have it. That is John Frusciante's full pedal board. It's crazy, and some of his choices, to be honest, I'm a little bit surprised with. It's mainly Boss and MXR pedals, which there's nothing inherently wrong with that. But just the fact that he hasn't been with the band since, you know, the late 2000s, I would have thought he maybe would have experimented with some different pedals and brands and brought something a little bit more... She brought a little bit more diversity to the pedal board, but maybe that's all going to change and develop, especially for the next album and tour after. I feel like that's when we'll really see maybe some interesting choices as he's more comfortable again in the role of being in the Peppers and just starting to try out gear and really flesh out more complex sounds for maybe the next album. That's what at least I think. Let me know in your comments down below what you think of this board as a whole. It actually seems fairly obtainable if you wanted to grab some of the exact pedals that John is using, which I think is really awesome. Um, yeah, that's everything. You guys, please hit subscribe button if you like this video. Lots of John Frusciante coming out, as I've already mentioned. Go watch part one of this two-part episode going over John Frusciante's 2022 pedal boards if you haven't seen the video I made already. And as always, you guys, thank you so much for watching.